Hey guys, it's Linux next year, and today's video we are going to be looking at the Cosmic Alpha 5 release. It has been released, and there is a bunch of new improvements on certain applications that they have in the desktop, and some new like, little improvements uh, that I have enjoyed seeing when using the desktop environment. So the first thing that we are going to be talking about straight off the bat is the bugs that I have experienced in the Cosmic Desktop. As I know, uh, System76, I think they follow me on this YouTube channel, and I think uh, even one of the developers have been in my comments before, like twice, I think. So we are going to talk about the bugs, uh, just in case if any of the uh, System76 developers see this video. Uh, the first bug that I have experienced is the same bug that I experienced in the last alpha release and that is to do with the XGG desktop portal in OBS Studio. When I first launch OBS Studio, the uh, screen capture doesn't bring up the XGG desktop portal and I have to log out of the desktop and re-log back in for the XG desktop portal to appear so then I can select the screen that I want to capture. Uh, it happens like every time, as soon as I restart my computer, open OBS Studio in the Cosmic Desktop, it's like, OBS is like, I can't find a desktop portal to um, open. And then the screen captures like, nope, I don't want to work. So then I have to log out, log back in, and then all of a sudden it just works perfectly fine. So little bug, not really that big of an issue, I would say, uh, but it is still a bug that I have experienced. Now, the good thing is that is about it. I haven't experienced like, really any other bugs, any crashes of any kind really cosmic is reaching a point of stability that i personally don't really have any issues only that portal problem with OPS studio uh there probably is like other bugs of course that i um just haven't experienced but for right now like when i've been using it for the past like three days with like games testing games on the desktop and testing out some applications like the Cosmic Media Player and Cosmic Files, moving things around, the Cosmic Store, um, yeah, it's, it's already like a really stable desktop environment, I would say. So as I was talking about the um, issues that I was having with the Cosmic Desktop and I was saying it was rather stable, well, I just experienced a desktop freeze or crash where I tried minimizing OBS Studio. As you can see the cursor there, it's right on the minimize. I clicked on it and the um, Cosmic Desktop is um, frozen. You can see my cursor isn't moving at all it's completely frozen and i was changing my wallpapers to test uh the bug if uh when you change wallpapers and you click same wallpaper on all displays there was a bug where it wouldn't do that for all the displays but it actually did it this time so that was good but then i just experienced um obs crashing uh this is the obs flat pack version also just so if any system 76 developers see this it is the flat pack version of obs and when i click minimize and i was changing the wallpapers uh, my whole desktop just crashed. So that's one issue that I just experienced with the Cosmic Desktop. So when it comes to what is new in Alpha 5, the first thing is just a little thing that makes uh, me um, happy, I would say, because before, a lot of animations weren't really implemented in the desktop, which made it extremely snappy and just instant. Uh, and if you like that, that's really good. But I want some type of animation when it comes to minimizing, maximizing, closing an application. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if closing application has an animation, let me see. No, so closing an application is instant, but I think that's perfectly fine. There, there is no closing animation, I don't think, in other desktop environments. Uh, but the big one is minimizing. There wasn't an animation for minimizing on lots of applications. I'm pretty sure it was only minimizing on the cosmic applications, I think. Uh, but as you can see, there's an animation for minimizing and maximizing, or not maximizing, uh, just bringing up a window and minimizing it. Uh, there is animations for that. Uh, there was already animations for maximizing this way. Uh, so that's really good to see. But just like the animations are slowly coming in and it's starting to be more refined and actually become, you say, smooth desktop environment when it comes to moving around uh, the desktop environment. Now, uh, one of the applications that I showed in my previous video was the Cosmic Media Player. And they have said that that is now the default media player for the desktop environment. So that's really good to see. I have been testing it and it has been pretty good. Like here is a replay of uh, God of War. And um, it works great, as you can see, it's awesome. No issues. That was shot on GPU screen recorder on a replay system and uh, it's chilling. No, no issues, I would say. But as you can see, uh, the media player is a bit bare bones. There's only a file 
on the top left uh, and then there's obviously the uh, media controls at the bottom so full screen the audio selection and the audio volume but the cosmic developers have said that they're going to create a native codec installation application to replace session installer while still a work in progress cosmic media player uses a vulcan for rendering and varpy for decoding where available for efficient video playback audio playback support will be added in the near future as well so as you can see uh, the Cosmic Media Player is extremely well, I would say. It's, it, like I said, it's a little bit basic. It doesn't have many um, controls, but it does have the basic controls for pausing, um, changing volume, the, the audio selection, all of that stuff. And it, as you can see, it works really, really well. we we'll watch some God of War gameplay. Now, the next one is about Alt-Tab Recency Ordering. So cycling through your open apps using Alt-Tab or Super-Tab will now cycle the apps in the order they will last active. Hold Alt or Super to select the app from the launcher using Tab or quickly press in and release the shortcut to jump to the most recent active window. To cycle between apps in reverse order, use Alt or Super Shift Tab, um, which is correct. When you do Alt Tab, it does seem to um, cycle to the last application. It's like the last one that you used, which was Notes Nook. So it's going to go to my Notes um, application for all the videos that I put down. And then if we do it in reverse order we do alt shift tab there you go now it's going to go to cosmic files which was the last application that i clicked on so that's really cool if you like doing alt tab it's going to go to the last application that you used and then if you do alt shift it goes to the previous application uh, or like last application that you used in a reverse order which was for me cosmic files now when it comes to the vr this has been improved also, so now VR has been refined to take into account the display's minimum refresh rate. These refinements ensure that the cursor appears to move smoothly, even if an application runs below this minimum refresh rate. The resulting stable cursor frame rate is most apparent in non-game applications running in a full screen mode. So if you were, let's say, let's play a video here, let's play the God of War one, right? And if we full screen it, what's the, uh, I think the FPS on this is 60. And if I move my cursor around, um, yeah, it's, ex it's extremely smooth, I would say. There, I, this cursor does not feel like 60, I don't think. It feels really smooth, I would say. We could try a different video, but I know all these videos are 60 FPS, so we're going to have to test like a YouTube video in full screen would be the one to try. So like uh, this short circuit video is shot in 30 FPS, and if we full screen it, um, my cursor does seem to be going to 30 FPS, but the one thing that the one thing that I am noticing when moving my cursor is that the video is being affected by moving my cursor. So that's interesting. If I start moving my cursor, it's fine. And then if I move my cursor, the video looks a little bit worse. I can notice something's going wrong with the video when I move my cursor around. And my cursor right now does not uh, feel that great. And probably because it's being clocked down to 30 FPS of the video because the video is full screen. So it does seem to work kind of. If that's what they're talking about, then I guess, yeah, it is working properly. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, it was affecting the video when I was playing it. So if the Cosmic developers could look into that, or if that's actually what is supposed to be happening, then I guess that's perfectly fine. I don't really know the behavior that it's supposed to do, but based off what they've said here, um, yeah, that is a really good feature that they have implemented. So now the Wayland Compositor is able to know more about the monitor minimum refresh rate. So then you have less issues when it comes to lots of full screen applications. Now, one thing that they have decided to show in the blog post was about user accounts, how user accounts are now a thing, but I'm pretty sure I pointed this out in the last alpha. I'm guessing it was maybe unfinished and that's why they didn't talk about it. Uh, but when we look here, this is the user setting. So we can click on your users. You can create a new user, which that's what I did. I created Polix V2 uh, and that is uh, working perfectly fine. I've logged into it and it's a completely new session. Not like my session right now with the main Polix account. You can easily click add user, make a full name, a username, a password, and you can make it an admin account if you want to or not. And one good thing now is that in the Cosmic Terminal, if you paste a link, I'm guessing, 
you are able to open it now. As you can see, we just opened up the video from a terminal. That's one of the new features in the Cosmic Terminal. You can open links into your browser. Whoa! And one thing that has been added to the Cosmic Files is a context drawer navigation mode. So as you can see here, now there is some navigations for moving across uh, your photos. That's the one that it seems to work on is, is photos. So as you can see, we can move across. We can also full screen this in the Cosmic Files. I think that's pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, so you don't really even need to like open it up in a photo viewer. You can just open it up straight here with the um, show details page. If you just leave that tick, then you can just easily uh, look at this stuff without needing um, to open it into a photo viewer. And then we have the bug fixes and improvements, which is literally insane. Every freaking alpha release, it is just like wild the amount of things that they decide to go out and fix this time. Like it's still a big list of fixes and improvements. So I'm just gonna read through all of them here. Fixed vertical monitor screenshots. Wow, awesome. Show hidden files toggle no longer resets after selecting show details. Open item location, right click menu option added to recent folder in Cosmic Files. New files can now be saved to a new folder. Added the ability to rename files while using file search. Right and middle click now closes context menus. Also removes permanent highlight of segmented buttons when right clicked. Cancelled authentication for installing system packages in the Cosmic Store now cancels the operation. Fix an issue causing pixelation when right clicking on a title bar. Fix an issue causing server side decorations to scale improperly. Fix a panic that occurred when mirroring displays. Fix a bug with missing window controls in Google Chrome. The calendar applet now reflects time zone changes. Implemented a fix for changes that to default application to save correctly. A panic involving Cosmic settings is now patched. Gaps can now be set below 3 in appearance settings. Updated logic to prevent cosmic comp crushing when switching inputs or outputs. Linux kernel at 6.12 compatibility. Patch state recursion caused by using the tiling shortcut. Fix a crash that occurred when stacking maximized windows. It is now possible to scroll to view a single wrapped line in Cosmic Edit. Fix an issue with certain letter combinations crash in the launcher. Fix a terminal bug causing a crash with WL paces called. Transparent windows now remain transparent in workspaces view. Clicking the find text search field now unfocuses the text box in use. Added lib NVIDIA EGL Wayland 1 to provide prevent steam hanging and x Wayland performance. Keyboard LEDs now maintain their state after unplugging and plugging in. Resolve a crash related to maximize sticky windows. Use of secure underscore input in Polkit dialog. Fixes to app ID parsing. Fix a panic related to Cosmic Files debug dialog. Fix a regression that caused the compositor to panic and crash. In absence of system D, a Zbus will be used to update the Dbus activation environment. Lib Cosmic apps now abide by users custom cursor themes where present. Remove drop shadow from the context drawer widget. Date formatting example changed to July 4th, 1776 when the Declaration of Independence was adopted to more clearly differentiate numerical month and day. So as we can see, there was a lot of things uh, fixed and as I was reading through that, I noticed there was a lot of um, like crash fixes with certain things. So uh, like I said, for me, I didn't experience any of those crashes, but I think for other people and for the System76 developers, they definitely did experience those problems. And I think the last one to talk about is the gaming side of Cosmic. And again, uh, as my other videos I've pointed out, it isn't ready. There's still uh, a lot of games that don't work properly. I did update this, I think two days ago. I went through and some games now have ticks like Cyberpunk 2077 on the Git version of Cosmic, which is what I'm running currently. Uh, the cursor doesn't escape now in borderless or full strength. So you, now, you can now play Cyberpunk 2077 without any issues. I, I tried tapping out and tapping back in to see if the cursor would escape in some, some way and it just didn't do it. So that's really good to see. But there still is problems like Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, for example. Uh, when you launch that game and then you decide to tap out of the game, as soon as it launches and you tap out, it goes extremely flickering uh, that I, I would not test it if you have, um, if you get like seizures, it's really bad, I would say. Uh, and then also like the um, game thinks I have a 60 Hertz monitor when I don't, I have a 144 Hertz monitor. And then like the Fallout 76, 
Cursor isn't working in full screen, but works in bordered window or borderless window mode. And then like a new world, it has no issues. Or like Helldivers 2, the game for me doesn't even want to launch now. It like launches in a uh, bottom right screen with a black window and it just doesn't go any further. But as you can see before, um, the cursor wasn't working in game. So like in the UI, couldn't click any of that. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to tab out of the game and the game does a black window screen now for me, as I said. Uh, same with Overwatch 2, like the cursor works in window mode, uh, but it doesn't work like in full screen or borderless and it also thinks I have a 60 hertz monitor and then with Marvel Rivals uh, the third party launcher doesn't appear you need this to work if you want to launch the game which is true you need the launcher to work to launch the game and the launcher just doesn't appear and the other one like Division 2 this one just launches in the background it doesn't even appear in the game but you can hear it you can hear the background sound uh, but it just launches in the background and same goes for like Warframe that's another one where the uh, launcher simply won't appear uh, and the game just sits there in the background just sitting there and it just doesn't go any further but uh there is a decent amount of games that can work so if you're not really into gaming uh, the cosmic desktop is like already like a pretty good desktop environment to try out and use of course you could experience other bugs but when it comes to uh gaming on the cosmic desktop it is just simply not ready i would say you guys would have to wait till the beta maybe for games to really start working or maybe the full release would be when things should be like fully ready but that does it for the cosmic alpha 5 review uh let me know the features if you if you care about any of those features if you're excited about any other features that are coming in the desktop environment uh any features that you would like to see or any bugs that you've experienced in the cosmic desktop i would really like to no. So if you did enjoy this video, definitely give it a like, definitely subscribe to the channel. And thank you to my supporters. I'll show a screenshot of you now. Thank you for giving me money every single month. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.